So, can I get one more shot of that? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. So, there's one other picture we've taken, or one other sketch we've done out of Hoopa, and this is it, it appeared in the Hoopa project. This was taken uh, up on Tishtang. Witness was a guy named Ed Maston. Ed and his girlfriend saw it when they were picking mushrooms. That's another thing that we believe Bigfoot eats on a regular basis that you don't hear a lot about. But witnesses have seen it consistently when they're out looking for mushrooms. And just so everybody knows, under certain type of oak trees, when there's a light snow, these mushrooms come right up out of the ground and you have to look real hard for them, but you can see them and when you smell them, they smell like, like a tan oak barrel. Very unique smell. So anyhow, this is the drawing of what it looked like, what that creature looked like when we drew it. This is the picture that Harvey drew of what it looks like without hair. Doesn't look much different. So, the reason I, I, I bring this stuff up is because it's all parts to a very complicated puzzle. And until somebody actually sits down and you start to understand all these pieces of the puzzle coming together, and you've read probably thousands of pieces of documents, you can't put it together. Is Joyce Kearney here? Where is she? Oh, hey Joyce, how are you? Thanks for coming. There's a very smart woman right there. We bought uh, Ray Crow's research about a year and a half ago. And over the years, Joyce wrote a series of letters to Ray about a Native American Bigfoot connection. And I read all of those, as did all of our researchers. Her letters coupled with Letters I read from a guy named Jim McLaren from the 1960s helped formulate these theories that we present in Tribal Bigfoot. One of the letters that Jim McLaren wrote to a lab in 1969 had to do with hair he recovered from the middle of the Siskiyou Wilderness, right near where the Patterson Gimlin footage was done. And he sent this hair that he found to this lab, and the lab sent him back a report that said that this wasn't real hair, it was synthetic hair, and it was dyed, and blah, 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 and that was their decision. So McLaren, when he initially wrote his letter, said, hey, we found this in the middle of the wilderness area, blah, 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 and, you know, it doesn't make sense, blah, 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 and the lab came back and said, no, this is synthetic, blah, blah, blah. Now, we whip forward to 2007, and we investigate an incident outside of Gasky, way up in Northern California, on an organic farm. Talk about it extensively in tribal. And I recover hair from the corner of this farm where this guy was raising peacocks, and something huge put his foot on the top of this fence and crushed the fence, went in, and plucked two of these peacocks on top of this bin. This bin was about this tall big pile of plucked feathers stood there and did it and then turned around walked away with the dead peacocks well right where it put its foot I found 20 pieces of hair and I knew right away based on its appearance it's Bigfoot hair and you know after a while if you see enough of this hair it has a unique look it, it kind of is very fine it kind of has the texture of pubic hair it's very unique it has kind of a reddish tint sometimes I submitted the hair to the lab we use, and I get the same almost exact letter that Jim McLaren got back. Dave, it's synthetic, and I got on the phone to her right away and says, hey, this is not synthetic hair. I could guarantee this. This is not. This came from an area where no one's going to be taking doll hair and sticking it down there. And she says, okay, I will submit this hair to a law enforcement FBI expert and get a determination. They came back and they said, no, that's real hair. That comes from a primate. We can't identify it, but it's real hair. Now, what's happened is, is that whereas human hair, 90% of the time human hair has a medulla. I mean, and that means it has a core to it down the center. On the opposite end of the scale, it seems as though 95% of the Bigfoot hair that is ever recovered doesn't have a medulla. 
without a medulla and without a follicle at the end, it's easy for people to surmise that it's synthetic. And it's not real. Well, after a law enforcement expert looks at it, he says, okay, I'll look at one end, and one end kind of looks like a normal hair without a follicle, without a medulla. Mm -hmm. But the other end is not like a synthetic hair because the other end of a synthetic hair should be cut where it is cut. But these aren't. They're worn. And they're, when you look at a worn hair in a microscope, you can see certain aspects of it that are completely different. Yeah. I was wondering, what if you burned that hair and it smelled just like one of your hairs that you burned? Well, synthetic, you know, something just synthetic, nylon, will burn it one smell way. like human hair burning? Uh, it's too I knew right away it's not, it's not synthetic. It's too valuable to us to burn. Yeah. So we found out that, and we had a confirmation that this is a real hair. And they said, okay, now what we need to do, so we get this report back and we get confirmation it's a real hair, and then we start to think, how many other times have researchers submitted hair and had this return saying it's synthetic? So, puzzling. So now we're, we're into a problem area because without a medulla, without a follicle, getting DNA out of that hair is going to be real tough. So we went through it piece by piece, it took us a long time. We found one hair with a medulla and a partial follicle on it and we submitted it. And what we got is we got a return that this lab, which are DNA experts for law enforcement, has never seen in their life. And they said, hey, it's very, very, very far away from the ape, orangutan, chimpanzee family. But it's that close away from human. And the lab report is in the book, and you can see it. It's the first time I've ever seen a report come out like that. So one of the issues is, is that there's certain inhibitors inside of Bigfoot hair that don't come with human hair. And I can't explain it because it's, it's hard to understand myself, even when they try to explain it to me. But with these inhibitors, it's hard to get DNA.